Hello, and thank you for taking a look at the demo video for my particle control script for the Blender game engine. We're going to go ahead and start with the general scene here where we have our player object already selected, along with other objects that are going to be necessary for this scene. Right now, what you're looking at is our wire setup for the uh, sensors, controllers, and actuators for the actual player controller. You can see that we have W and S to move the object, player object up and down the spacebar to fire and we have an always sensor tied to a Python script controller that is necessary to push our information into the game engine as soon as it is launched. So we have a couple of files on the right side. We have the DTS effects combo and the DTS info loader. Those are both going to be necessary to push information into the game engine and make use of that same information. As you can see that we don't have any kind of sensors, controllers, or actuators on any of the other objects. So let's go on ahead and get started here. As long as you have loaded the add-on, the plugin, into your Blender installation, you can go to the Preferences, Add-ons, click on Game Engine, and then you will see a new entry for the DT Scripts Particle Database. Go on ahead and uh, click on the fly down there just to check out the details, and just in case this software does happen to bork your project or break into your neighbor's house, I'm not responsible. If you agree, go on ahead and tick the box to the right. Once that's done, you can close the preferences. And let's get started by going to the particles panel. You'll see that there's a couple of new panels added there. And we'll go on ahead and add the DTSFX combo script and give our bullet a name. And then once you click edit mode, you'll go to the actual settings. Many of these are still in development, but the one that you'll be interested in is the fragment count. Anytime it collides with an object, it will give off a minimum uh, or a maximum of particles and you can add multiple objects to each particle system so just go ahead and click commit and then we'll go ahead and move on to our particle here to do so you will click new particle give it a name and then click create settings are going to appear similar to the projectile. There is no need to worry about how many fragments the particle will emit since it will be emitted itself. All you can need to do here is go ahead and click on commit once you are done. And then let's move on to our static object. This is what will actually be used to emit the particles. Once again, click new, give it a name, and then create. The settings for this will not be used at this point in time, but will be used or maybe even be removed in a future revision. It does have support for animations also. And now we go to our wall object, which is known as a material within the system at this point in time. We'll just go ahead and name it wall and click create. And then we'll go to edit mode for that. Now this has quite a few options. What you can actually do is select which static objects you would like to emit on the, um, upon hitting the wall and what type of particles you would like to have emitted. And then you can select a upper bound and a lower bound for the area of effect. And we'll just go ahead and use 5 as our upper and 0 as our lower for the time being. Once you have these settings, you can go ahead and click Commit. So the next step in this is as you have gone through and and configured everything, you'll want to push the settings to the Blender game engine. You can see that there is a message that pops up for the database messages there. Once this is done, you'll even be able to go to the text editor and see what information is going to be pushed over to the game engine at this moment. The next thing you will need to do is set up the physics settings for your bullet particle and your static object. Now as far as the bullet is concerned, be sure to have it set as a dynamic object with actor activated. The particle only needs to be set up with actor off and ghost on, so that way it isn't detected with any collision um, actuators. Be sure to have no collision set up for the static and the wall does not really need anything changed as far as physics settings go. Once this is done, move everything to the second layer. Once those are moved over, we will almost be ready to go on ahead and try to actually 
play the game. Um, there are a couple of other things that would need to be set up beforehand. One, you need to actually choose which object it is that you would like to fire. You can go ahead and set that up on the edit object actuator within the player object and be sure to give it a linear velocity so that way it will actually go somewhere when you do decide to fire the object. Okay, now as far as the settings for the actual wall object go, we are going to need to make a change to the tank level property and turn that up to 100 so that way the effect script will run on this and be sure to set the damage level to zero also to prevent any conflicts or extra error messages popping up. Once you hit play, you can hit the space bar fire at the wall and see the effect generated in front of you. And if you take a look at the top left, you will see the actual value of the wall lowering as time goes on, as it continues to be hit. And if you fire above that, it gives off a dry effect. If we were working with more than one particle and more than one static object, the system that I've created can actually account for that. What you'll need to do is go ahead and create your second particle, and then once that is put together, you'll go ahead and set up the physics on there once again, set it up as a dynamic object with actor deactivated and ghost enabled. Once done, you'll want to go ahead and add it as a new particle to the system. Then we'll go back to our first layer, which has our wall object. Select it. Be sure to refresh the database so that way the new particle object is added. And then you'll go on ahead and add it under wet particles. Once done, be sure to commit your changes. Push your changes to the game engine. Be sure to note the database message showing that you have pushed your number of objects to the engine and then play. And you will see that as the particles are randomly called for, it can pull from one of the two entries on that material. And you can even do this with multiple static objects. So let's go on ahead and create a couple different ones that would be used on our dry reaction. Once done, you'll want to go on ahead and add it to the database. But for the second object, if you click on the left, you can actually use the predefined objects from previously and you will see that it will add both objects to the particle definition. Once again, go back to our wall material, refresh your database, add it as a new static type. Be sure to commit your changes, push to the game engine, and play. And you will see the random selection of the static object every time that there is a dry reaction. And that's everything. Thank you for stopping by and taking a look at the video and uh, hopefully you enjoy using the script.